Hey everyone, uh, somebody had asked me if I had a video on how to debone a turkey. So a story came up, every, every Thanksgiving basically what I do is I debone the turkey and then I use those bones to make my stock ahead of time which gives me lots of gravy and uh, you don't have that sort of last minute trying to get the drippings out of the pan and trying to you know make some sort of gravy and there's never enough and that kind of thing. So um, I do that for that reason but I also do it that the turkey you can cook it a lot quicker and uh and, and not dry it out so everybody hates sort of that dry breast meat and stuff and so what i'm going to do is show you how i do it there's a couple of ways to do this thing so i'll sort of talk you through it but we're going to do it the easy way where we're going to cut the back through and um you can also do this as a almost like a roadkill chicken kind of style too um you know you can flatten it out on a pan and just bake it really really quick as well um and when i say quick i'm copping a you know, a couple of hours, not, uh, you know, not the, not the uh, five, six, sometimes eight hours that some people cook a turkey, which uh, is way too long as far as I'm concerned. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about this. I've rinsed it off. So if you've seen any videos with Julia Child, she'll also tell you, you know, that if, if you've got any poultry, you should always wash it. And so that's been done. Um, when you get your turkey, typically there might be a little bag of something here. It's not in this one and that's fine, but you'll usually get the, uh, the gizzard and, and some of that stuff in there. This one might be packed on the inside and it looks like it is. So you're going to find the heart. Um, yeah, the tail. Okay. So the tail's here as well. I'm going to use all that for my stock as well. Um, the neck will be in there as well, as well as the liver. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to put this aside. And uh, what we're going to do is a couple things. One, I like to keep the wing on there. So basically when I, when I cook this off, I'm going to debone it, then reshape it. And once the bones are all out there, you could also pack in your stuffing, put it in there as well. What I will say about stuffing though is a lot of people get, you know, they get the flu uh, around Thanksgiving time. And that's because um, they've, they've probably got, uh, you know, foodborne illness from uh, stuffing that wasn't cooked enough. And so the whole idea is if, if you stuff your, you put your stuffing in here, yes, you get a lot of the flavors that go in there, but the temperatures never really get high enough to kill off any bacteria and such. So um, you can, you, people can get sick. So even if, if you do it this way, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Pull that out, bake it in a, a loaf pan, make sure you, you reach 165 degrees Fahrenheit on all of that. And uh, you can go from there. So when I do mine, all the bones are gone except for the drumstick and except for the wings as well. I'm gonna take the wing tips off. And so the way that you do that, you just sort of find where that, that joint meets and then you can just sort of cut through that, save that from my stock. I'll do the same on the opposite side, like that. And um, we'll, we'll, um, we'll talk about these a little later on. You can actually trim these down. Sometimes I do that. You just sort of cut around, pull this off and then you get that sort of, you know, the nice bone exposed rather than this uh, whole chunky skin part. So what I do first is flip it over to the other side, okay? And so I've got the feet sort of away from me. I've got the wings toward me and I'm gonna take a boning knife and I'm just going to score this down the back. I wonder if you can see well enough here. There we go. So I'll go down through here like that. And then what we start to do is we just start to work it back this way. And what you'll find is where the thighs are as well. There's, um, we call this the oyster. Um, so there's this little, this little ball of meat that goes in through one of the parts of the bone here. And we're gonna wanna save that. So we're gonna just be careful when we go there, but you can just kind of follow along here this way. You'll also find that there's another little bone that sort of comes up near this, near the back here. And as I come around, I've got the bone that meets the thighs. These are coming down this way. I'm just going to continue to follow this along the bone. And I don't have to press really hard. I just have to use a nice sharp knife and just start working away like that. There is that piece there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it out and you'll see it's just this sort of round chunk of meat and it's totally worth keeping. It's a piece of brown meat, very tasty. As I get up to this part here, there's this little part that's attached part of the wing, sort of uh, what we'd have on our back is, um, uh, gee, what do we call it? Uh, gee, I can't even remember the name of it. Um, anyways, it's the bone sort of in our back that sort of moves when we move our arms. And uh, it'll, oh, it'll hit me later, I'm sure. 
Okay, so I'm just working around that this way, and I'm working on both sides of it. So you're going to have meat on both sides of that. I know you can't see it all that great here, um, but you can sort of see this this here. So there's this little flat bone that runs down through here. So I'm going to try to go around that and, and release that, free that. That's it. Like that. And then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so see if I can do this a little better so that you can see. Hopefully my arm's not in the way too, too much. There's the oyster from the other side. So again, I'm gonna dig in through here. There you go. And I'm just gonna sort of start freeing it. So you're sort of freeing it from the back. And, and if you can grab a piece of uh, meat, you can actually let the knife do the work for you and it'll just sort of pull away as you sort of run the knife through like that. And that's it. So you'll see there's this bone here. This is sort of where the, 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 the hip joint would be very close to what we would have. It's very similar. And around that, then there's meat. So we're going to try to free that and do the same on the other side here. And I was considered doing this in a faster, uh, the faster uh, camera work, but um, I think you, you might miss some of the details, so I will do it this way. I know it's a lot more pleasurable to watch something that's just going a little faster, but um, at least we'll be a little bit more thorough here. All right. And so we've got the sort of backbone coming down through here and then goes into where the hips are, right? That's it. And again, I'm freeing those and I still can't remember. Shoulder blades, right? We have a shoulder blade. I don't know what they call this on poultry, um, but it's a very similar bone to what we have on our backs um, that's connected to the arm, uh, the arm structure there. And then up in here, so once we've got this through here, you'll see this is where the thigh joints and there's a ball joint right in here. So what we're going to try to do is go through that ball joint and just sort of free up that part right there. Sometimes easier said than done, but yeah, you just sort of follow your knife along and you just sort of run against the bone. So it's very similar to filling a fish, really. I mean, butchery is kind of like that. You just kind of follow where things go and uh, you usually do okay there. All right, so that's it. So you can see here, there's that ball joint. Okay, so I'm going to try to free that. Sometimes just a little tap through and we're pretty much through it there. And again, you don't need tons of strength here. You just need to sort of work with uh, the natural, the natural parts of the, um, where things fall and where, where, where they come apart and the whole bit. There we go. So then I'll just, again, I know you can't see that all that well. And we're going to keep this thigh bone there for now. We just wanted to free it from here. And so right here, now the breast, there's the rib cage and the breast is attached to that. So we got to be careful here not to wreck the breast. And we're just going to run the knife along the rib cage. And we're going to go right up to that front, that front piece where the cartilage is here. So I'm coming down. And so where this little joint is, there's another joint that moves in here. And then it's attached, of course, to the wing bone, which comes up through the front. So there's two little parts that go into the wing bone to the front. And um, we'll, we'll try to save that if we can. So you can see that breast meat right there is starting to come in there. So that's the breast. And again, I don't want to munch that up too, too bad. I'm just going to expose that joint.
you can't really see that, can you? Okay, so if we go through here, just exposing this joint here. So this is where this whole assembly goes into. And I can actually just sort of take apart this wing. I can separate it right from there, from that wing. Okay, like that. And through that, you'll see that there's, as I come up here, then I'm gonna run into the wing, or sorry, to the uh, wishbone. So I'm just gonna follow that along. I'm gonna release this. And you can see it sort of start to come apart quite nicely here. Like that. Okay, so the wishbone is right in here. It's just kind of running down, it's in a V shape. I'm going to release this. This little piece of um, uh, cartilage here, or it's not, it's connective tissue actually, it's at the top. You wanna to get rid of that, that doesn't cook uh, tender at all, ever. And I'm just going to continue to do that. And I'm gonna follow this all the way along until you get to that, that breastbone, okay? So, and then I'll just run down the breastbone like this. And I wanna be really careful not to pierce the skin. Okay, so I need to come down here. And this technique here could be done um, when you do a turducken. Uh, sometimes we don't take the back out, we just sort of work from the top. You just sort of debone from the top and tr sort of pull it out. It's, uh, it's a lot more work and it takes a little bit more time. It can be done, um, but I find this, this way is quite nice. So that's it, I'm coming here. So basically that whole half is a part and I'm just bringing it down so that I don't go through um, that, that skin. I wanna keep that skin whole so that it all comes apart. So now I just need to do the same on the opposite side. Okay, so here I am at that, that's that thigh joint that's gonna come in through here. And so I'm gonna go, try to get through that ball joint. Okay, and sometimes if you just move it, you can kind of see where, where the actual joint is, okay? And then you just wanna sort of break what holds that, holds that joint in. Okay, and then sometimes just a little bit of a, Sometimes a little easier than said, right? <laughs> easier said than done here. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut that and come in. You're not getting to see this very well. So from here, oh, see, and I've got it coming apart quite nicely, actually. Yeah, that's it. Sometimes those crunchy sounds are not things that people like to hear, but um, it, you know, it sounds like bones breaking and that sort of thing. So when those joints do come apart, they do have a sound to them. Um, so you just got to kind of be ready to hear that and, and that's fine. Some people don't like that crunchy sound, but kind of a necessary evil, I guess. Okay, so maybe I'll just try to try to release this a little bit more so that we can see this joint a little bit better. I'll pull this down. And again, I'm trying not to cut any of that, that skin. I want that skin to be intact all the way through and it'll make for a nicer, um, nicer cook and you won't have that skin slide back. And, and the nice thing about this too, is you get a lot more, you get a lot more crispy skin than you do. There, so that sound that nobody likes. Okay, and I'm just coming through that ball joint right there. Okay, so that ball joint is now free like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing, just gonna pull this through. And just following the bone, just following the bone all the way through. I'm gonna find that rib cage once again. And you start to feel the hollowness now. Like once you've got this loose, you can, as your knife rubs up against the ribs, you can feel how hollow it is now. Okay, so be careful again, there's the breast. So I don't wanna wreck that. So I'm just gonna follow that along like that. All the way up to the breastbone. Okay, I might have to free this up a little bit just to, so I can see and you can see as well. Okay, so I'm gonna come up through here. I'm gonna just get the meat off around here, around that joint. And that's the joint that connects the wing, the upper wing, the drum, to the um, um, to that to that to that backbone there or uh, not the backbone but the uh, oh bloody hell I can never remember it's the uh, shoulder blade that kind of shoulder blade and I'm sure it's got a different name for poultry but um, for lack of a better word that's uh, that's the best I can come up with at this point okay this one I've actually separated so that's okay there we go I actually took it right out this time so you can kind of see it's this 
knife knife kind of looking thing and it runs down the back and there's one on either side okay so here same thing here i've got the wishbone that's in here and i'm just going to continue to separate the breast from the breast from the rest of the carcass. And here it goes. And just following that down. And once again, I don't want to cut through that skin, right? And so use the weight just to sort of let that work through. And you can kind of run just like that. Okay, so that's the whole in that's the whole inside bone structure right there. So there's the breastplate, the whole bit. You could scrape some of this stuff off, okay? But I'm gonna be I'm gonna be making a stock from that. Okay, so um, that's good. So now we're sort of flat here. We've got breast, breast, skin's all intact, wing, wing on the other side. Any extra fats and stuff? Sometimes I take a little bit of it off. Some of it doesn't cook very nice, and it just stays kind of uh, it's not nice in your mouth, right? but you do want some fat in there, of course. All right, so there's that. And what I'm gonna do, I've, I've got a little bit of silver skin here, so I'm gonna take that off, okay? And that's sort of attached to the, um, to the inside of the rib cage. And it's kind of cartilage-y kind of a feel to it, so we don't want that. So we're gonna take that off. And then for the thigh bone, so I wanna keep the whole drum intact. I'm gonna keep the bone in there, but I'm gonna take this bone out and you'll see there's kind of a natural line here. So I'm just gonna follow that line. Like that. Uh, I hope you can see, maybe I'll move you here. There it's, maybe it's a little bit, little bit better here. So do that, do that, do that. And I just sort of free it from this side. Okay, and then sort of follow the bone on each side. Try to leave as much of the meat on as you can, okay? And then again, you've got another ball joint in here, okay? So what we wanna do is get down to that ball joint, release that ball joint, and any connective tissues that's uh, that are connected as well. There we go. And so you can actually see, here, I'm just gonna clear that out. So you can actually see that, that joint, right? Where it fits into that ball point. So I'm gonna do the same, just gonna keep continue to free that out. And it also has a little bit of a, uh, for lack of a better word, it's almost like a kneecap there too. Okay, so again, I think I probably need to do some studies on, on poultry anatomy, <laughs> on fowl, but on what things are actually called. But um, we kind of share some of the same types of things. So that's, for the lack of a better word, there's a kneecap there. So we're gonna get rid of that as well. And, what I do is just kind of slide through and I'll cut it up through here. I'll grab a hold of that. And once again, anytime I can, I can let the weight of the actual carcass sort of work for me. And then I can just run my knife along. That's awesome, right? So there you go. That's here. I'm going to take a little bit of this fat off. Um, I do love fat. Don't get me wrong. It's very good. But if there's too much of it and it's just kind of uh, sitting there in your mouth, it's, uh, it's not a good thing. Okay, so I'm going to leave these two bones for the wing. I'm going to get rid of this, this little uh, connective tissue here. Okay, this again, it's a tendon. It doesn't cook very, uh, it doesn't cook soft at all. And I'm just double checking to make sure there's no extra pieces of cartilage or anything like that. It's nice to just have the round bone just sit there. Uh, it looks a lot nicer once you get it on the plate. The whole beauty of this whole thing is that you can cook it all. You can season all the inside on the meat, on the inside and the outside, so you get good seasoning. And then at the end, basically when it's all wrapped, you can just cut it into slices, and those slices will have uh, white meat and dark meat, and they'll also um, have no bones. So it is nice, and you can get you know you can get a lot out of your bird by doing that. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side here. <clears throat> Same thing. So another way to do it is to just hold that bone right up this way and just sort of work the meat down from either side like this. Okay, that's it. And then I'll score it down that 
line. So it's kind of nice. It's got that line there to sort of help guide you. And once again, I'm just going to like that. Okay, and once again, we've got sort of that knee joint there. We've got a ball joint in there as well. And what I want to do is just try to release that, keep as much of the meat as I can, and get rid of any cartilage or anything that somebody's going to have to chew on or, you know, they get in their mouth, of, you know, just as a surprise, which is never a good surprise. Um, and, and we want to make sure that we get that off. Okay, so that's what we want to do. The real advantage here is that you can make you can make your sauce or your yeah your stock and then your uh, your sauce or gravy for the next day and it's ready to go. So there's no wrestling when your guests get there um, to sort of work on that. You can you can have it all ready. Okay, so back over here, uh, there's that knee joint. I'm just going to take that out. Okay, like that. Looks like I might have cut some of it off already, which is great. Yeah, there's just little pieces here. So I want to make sure I get that off. Uh, didn't do a very good job there. Yeah, I cut right through the cartilage. So now I have to get those little chunks out. It's not all, all going to come out in one nice piece, which kind of sucks. But you do want to get that off because, again, um, you could be slicing that meat and then all of a sudden this is on somebody's plate and uh, that's no fun. So once upon a time... I would do three or four of these for Thanksgiving dinner and uh, <laughs> when I had larger crowds, but um, you know, you can, you can, you can get this stuff done and you can get it cooked quite quickly and it takes up obviously less, uh, less stoves or uh, oven space, which is nice. Yeah, this piece is a little bit stubborn. I think I'm actually going to leave it here. I'm not going to waste my time and waste your time watching me do this. All right. So then I'm going to move this here. The other part you can do, this is not, you know, you don't have to do this, but you could. Um, I like to get sort of around this leg here. You will find, and if you've eaten enough turkey legs in your time, you'll know that there's some, uh, some, some cartilage-y kind of um, uh, pieces in there. Okay, so you'll want to make sure that you kind of try to pull some of that out. You will still have some once you cook. They'll still be there. Um, but I found that... Uh, Hang on, I'm just going to cut this off here. Okay, so I cut this. You just get a nicer finish if you do this. And again, not necessary, but it's just one of those little touches that's kind of nice. So you get that kind of, you know, how they show bones on cartoons, right? It's, it's this sort of, uh, you know, joint um, that's nice and flush. And, you know, they put those little little white paper chef hats on them. We don't see that too much anymore. I think it's be considered a little on the cheesy side, um, but there may still be some old hotels and stuff that still do it. Okay. There we go. Yeah, it looked like you got some 3D there. I think a, a piece went flying right by the camera there. So anyway. There we go. Okay, so you can kind of see, you see this stuff? Okay, this cooks, and you'll recognize this when you, uh, when you actually eat it. You'll go, oh yeah, 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 I remember seeing those. Okay, and again, I'll finish those up after I finish the, uh, the video here. Um, but that's um, pretty much it. I'll do the exact same on the same side. I'll clean this up a little bit. But here's the idea. Take this turkey, which is now beautiful. So if I pick this up, look at that. It's just flat like that. There's only two bones in it for the legs. And then, of course, the wings are on their own bones as well. And so you'll have, you know, some of your guests will obviously be fighting for, for uh, the wing. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, but what's nice here is I can put all my seasoning all the way through there. Uh, and then after that, I kind of close it up this way like that. And you could, you could put, you know, your, your stuffing inside and do that. And then what I do here is I just run a skewer through there. So I just run a skewer through here. And then after that, you can actually put it back on the other side. Okay. Like that. And then what I'll do is I'll take the two legs, I'll put them up like this, and you can actually sort of cook it like this. So there are no bones all the way through here. So once it's finished cooking, um, you can cut the legs off. So you take the, the drumsticks off, take the wings off, and then this whole thing, you could just slice, 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 slice. It's gonna stay nice and moist. 
the skin's gonna be all nice and crispy and uh, it'll cook in a lot less time. Okay, so um, that's it. So thanks for being here with me. <laughs> okay, so now all these bones, I'm gonna crack those all up. I'm going to roast them in the oven with a mirepoix. So with some carrots, some onions, and some celery. And once I've got it all browned and everything, I'm going to put that into a stock pot. I'm going to bring that to a boil, then drop it to a simmer. I'm gonna cook it for a long time with some peppercorns and some fresh herbs, some uh, bay leaf, and, and uh, we're just gonna do that. And then I'll thicken that, and that'll be my, my gravy for tomorrow. And then what I do is people will say, well, what about all the stuff in the, in the bottom of the pan? That I just throw in there, just at the last minute, I throw it into my sauce, throw it in there, and that's just that extra little bit of flavor, and it's just wonderful. So uh, thanks, uh, thanks for uh, <laughs> being with me through this, and uh, good luck to you. Ciao.